I'm extremely happy with the way that this conference has gone. Every year, every time we do this conference, every two years, it seems that you know, people say it's the best ever, and that's a track record that I'm intending to continue. Um, I think, yeah, I think this one can count. One thing, of course, that allows that to happen is that the actual science that gets presented does make progress all the time. In fact, I would go so far as to say that every time it makes accelerating progress. So that's, that's awesome. Also, the fact that Sense Foundation itself is contributing a higher proportion of the work as we carry on further along and some of our projects go, uh, have been going on long enough that they are actually generating their own data so we can have more and more of our researchers actually on stage presenting stuff that we have funded rather than just other people's. Well, there's certainly been a fantastic buzz here. There's no doubt about that. But let's, let's talk a little bit now, for the, for, for the benefit of the layman, of the whole rejuvenation biotechnology world. Why, in your opinion, is it so important? I think really the best way to describe why rejuven rejuvenation biotechnology is so important now is that there is still an enormous battle for hearts and minds when it comes to actually getting people to understand that aging is bad for you. People are still very, very fixated on the concept that aging is something distinct from the specific diseases and disabilities of old age that kill people and that people are already very firmly against, when in fact that distinction is biologically nonsensical. So I think that the more we can actually present technologies that are already accepted as the cutting edge of medicine and medical research as also being relevant to the prevention of the diseases and disabilities of old age, then the more we can actually realign people's understanding of what aging really is and get them to accept that there ought to be more work in this area. Is it your view that aging is itself a disease? I actually like to call, at least I like to call aging a kind of uber disease. I like to emphasize that the diseases of old age, unlike the diseases that affect people irrespective of age, infectious diseases and so on, are not curable in the narrow sense of the word curable. You can't ever, we're not going to ever have some kind of therapy that is a one-off treatment which renders the person non-aging in one or another particular way, let alone in all ways. We're going to have to do periodic preventative maintenance just as we would do on a simple man-made machine. And if one describes things that way, then it's much easier to see that we, our real problem is we shouldn't be calling the diseases of old age diseases either. We should be really calling those aspects of the side effects of being alive in the first place, which of course is what aging is. So what about the SENS Research Foundation's achievements to date? What do you think the key achievements are? The key achievements are beginning to build up at a respectable rate. Um, I, I would say that last year was the first time that I felt really able to say that we had made a groundbreaking proof of concept breakthrough that was based entirely on, first of all, our ideas and second of all, our actual funding. That was when we were able to protect cells in a culture dish from the major molecule that drives the progression of cardiovascular disease, the major toxin that messes up the cells in the artery wall. We are still, of course, a long way from bringing that to the clinic. We are making steady progress, which is, uh, was presented, of course, by those researchers at this meeting. But that was really our first really conspicuous proof of concept thing. Since then, we've had a couple more, um, which are going to be coming out in publications this year. And next year, we'll probably have half a dozen. So I'm pretty happy.